What's up, guys? We are live for AMA Thursday. I'm your host, Greg Mercer. I'm joined by my co-host, Rolando Galliano. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going, Greg? How's it going, Freedom Builders? I'm doing great. I'm excited for today's AMA. If these you guys are new here, this is where we answer all the questions that you guys have for us. So drop them in the chat box right now, and um, we'll go ahead and get started um, answering them. Unless you have an update on our product, Rolando. I forgot to even ask. Yeah, well, uh, a, a blog post went out last week, and of course, uh, Murphy's Law is is uh, working against us here. <laughs> Uh, it's a, it's in production, but uh, there's definitely some major delays, and uh, that's really where it's at right now. That's the holdup is with our manufacturer. These things happen, but you just got to remain positive and uh, get ready for the uh, the comeback. Thanks for the update. The first question is from GL. How many keywords should we bid on? Do we have to bid three times with one keyword for three different match types? For example, exact, broad, and phrase match. You should bid on as many keywords as you can. So what I normally do is I go into Keyword Scout, which is inside of the Jungle Scout web app. I find as many keywords as I can for my particular product. And then I go ahead and create an ad group for all, all of the above, exact match, broad match, as well as phrase match. And then over time, I make adjustments or optimizations to each of those different match types. So, you know, some words perform really well in broad, other words perform really well in phrase, other ones perform really well in exact. So that's how I go about doing it. And that way you have maximum control for adjusting bids. All right, DK um, YouTube is asking, I wonder if the same person were to click your ad five times, would you be charged the ad fee five times? Good question. The answer is no, thankfully. Um, Amazon does have a pretty smart like anti-abuse algorithm built in there. So not only would you not be charged five times, but they actually even adjust if they think it's like malicious behavior. So for example, if they think that like you're just going in there and like clicking on one of your competitor's ads or something like that, they might not even charge your competitor for that since they like... Uh, can realize that you guys are competing for that same product or niche. All right, Zishan on YouTube. When creating the broad phrase exact match keyword list, should I use the exact same keywords that I get from Jungle, the Jungle Scout web app for each of those three categories, broad, phrase, and exact? Yes, the answer to that is yes. I create one um, ad group for all the keywords for each of those individual uh, match types. All right, Hermo, YouTube. Hello, I'm in the process of listing my product in the inventory keywords page. Two boxes appear for search terms and style keywords. Uh, how do you optimize the search using these categories? I'm not sure if I understand the question, Rolando. Do you, do you know what they're talking about there? Looks like it's, they're talking about now, they're going back into Seller Central where we enter our keywords. Oh, 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 oh okay, on in the product details, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. the search terms um, is important. When If you go back to the Million Dollar Case Study episode where we're talking about creating a listing, we talk about that, and you can put additional keywords in the search term fields. The style keywords, as far as I understand, aren't as important, um, but I mean, feel free to put them in there uh, if you want. All right, uh, Graeme asks, hey all, firstly, happy holidays to everyone. So yes, happy holidays, everyone. Uh, regarding PPC, is Keyword Scout relevant for the UK? Where else do I look? Cheers. Yeah, good question. Yes, you can use Keyword Scout to harvest keywords um, in English for the UK marketplace as well. In the near future, I don't know an exact date, we'll release Keyword Scout support specifically for the Amazon UK marketplace. But in the meantime, uh, thankfully, since both countries speak English, you can use the American um, keywords for your UK listing. All right, Robert from YouTube. I'm doing jumps in uh, first, trying to get sales and reviews. Thought I should do this first so I get at least a review before doing PPC, or should I just start off with PPC right away as well? Yeah, this is a popular question that we get. And the way I like to do it is I like to go ahead and do PPC right off the bat. Your listing doesn't convert as well without some reviews on it. Uh, so some people don't start their PPC until after they get a few reviews. But me personally, I like to go ahead and just launch it straight from the beginning. Um, yeah, that's my personal preference. All right, Zishan. 
Uh, does the order in which I list the keywords matter when creating a manual campaign? No. And it's uh, it also any re repeats that you might have accidentally dropped in there, it'll eliminate those as well. So it's pretty intuitive. Yeah. Roman asks, what's the best Amazon strategy auto versus manual? Yeah, so I usually create auto campaigns um, in the early days because it helps me harvest additional keywords using the search term report inside of Amazon Seller Central. After that, I usually turn automatic uh, match or automatic campaigns off because it doesn't give me the granularity I need to adjust my um, campaigns to really uh, maximize them for like efficiency and profitability. So. Auto works fine in the short term, but the long term, you're going to want to switch to full manual so you have uh, yeah, the most amount of control over it. All right, curly and red. Uh, for PPC, do you recommend Amazon to select keywords, et cetera, and run, or do you recommend a manual PPC where you can add your own keywords? By the way, I launched today. Congratulations, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Congratulations, that is awesome. Um, I, you can use Amazon's selected keywords. What you'll usually find is it's a pretty short list. It's not like real in depth. Um, so I used to use this in addition to Keyword Scout, um, but real, if I'm being honest with you now, I usually just export the keywords straight out of Keyword Scout because I found that they were all those keywords were always in Keyword Scout and just like saved me a little bit of time. But if you want, I mean, feel free to uh, like try doing both of them. So yeah. All right, Zishan, YouTube. Uh, if you run out of product and inventory and your inventory goes to zero, will this affect your placement in the rankings and the listings page? If you run out of product and inventory goes zero, will this affect your, okay. Um, <clears throat> when you're out of stock, your listing won't show up in the search results at all. Amazon doesn't wanna show listings that you can't even purchase from in the search results, rightfully so, that'd be a poor customer experience. When you go back in stock, um, to answer your question, uh, yes, you typically are ranked a little bit lower. However, I've never had that much trouble like regaining my rank. It might take like a few days or maybe even a few weeks, but you can do things like give away a few coupons or bid more aggressively for on your PPC for those few weeks. And that will help you like get ranked better um, in the search results. All right, Eduardo asks, I'm on day five out of, t of 10 uh, of launching my product. What a cost? Do you recommend? Thanks. Yeah, you know, when it's only been, uh, when you've only been selling for five days, what I typically do is I just bid very high for all my uh, search terms, uh, just so I can get that top placement. I can try to get as many sales as possible. So right now you don't have too much control over your ACOS, you know? It's not uncommon for it to be 100% or even more, all right? So um, I'm not really worried about that on day five. On day five, like you are, Edward, which again, congratulations for launching. Um, I'm just concerned about getting those sales and then in the coming weeks and months is when I really try to optimize to get that ACoS much lower. And typically your ACoS, you want, you want it to be under your break-even point. So just make sure to download the ACoS calculator that's found uh, in the workbook and you could ca calculate what your ACoS is, what your target ACoS is. Uh, so yeah, let's go cool. ahead. Uh, next question, uh, it's G-S-C-H-A-A-F, <laughs> 713. Can, can a strictly PPC-based launch work if the product is low competition? Um, yeah, potentially. Uh, I mean, a strictly PPC-based launch could theoretically work in any niche, um, it's probably just gonna be like a little bit slower, you know, like if not really that many people are searching and buying this product, then uh, you know, you're not gonna get a ton of additional sales from it. You could try it if you want, but you'll probably end up um, giving away some coupons to like a deal site or something similar. All right, Olga, with your hooded baby towel, for example, do you run PPC just uh, for this keyword broad or do you go for exact long tail keywords? Which ones work? better? 
Yeah, good question. So no, I don't just bid for hooded baby towel. I bid for a whole bunch of different search terms, okay? So to answer your question, I go for lots of key long tail keywords. We're talking even like hundreds or sometimes even up to a thousand keywords. So I definitely don't just bid for one keyword. Um, and I don't even necessarily use all of those terms for exact match. I still do exact fit phrase and broad match for all those um, particular keywords. There's not one match type that globally always works the best. It really depends on the word. All right, Amir asks, I saw one of your competitions rank. I saw one of my competitors rank VSR very well by 15 days, 17 uh, pieces daily giveaway. But this, but his list does not appear in any keyword I searched. How much does it take to uh, product rank in keywords? So when my competitors rank BSR very well, I don't know if I understand what they're trying to ask. Do you understand, R Rolanda? I'm trying to make out. I mean, maybe, or maybe you could it. maybe you could put that back in the chat box and phrase it a little bit differently. I'm not quite sure what you're trying to ask there. I'm sorry. So let's see. All right, here's one. Um, if you run out of product, should you suspend any PPC campaigns, Rolanda? What do you think? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Totally. You don't want to. <laughs> In fact, maybe even before, if you, if you see that you're running low, you might want to run the, you might, might want to stop the PPC several days beforehand and That's maybe it'll, it'll draw it out a little longer. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, Amazon won't show your sponsored products uh, campaign if you run out of stock. So you actually don't even have to worry about suspending it. But to Rolando's point, I'd probably try to turn it off a little bit earlier because you're obviously selling much faster than what you can keep up with. That's a How good problem to have. <laughs> very good problem to have. How do you determine the bid for auto campaign? Rolando, what do you think? Well, typically they give you a bid range. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna stay well within that bid range. Um, and then over time, you can adjust it as you start to see what, you know, what is like the sweet spot for your keyword, uh, for, for your campaign overall or, or your category. Cool. Joel asks, what's the difference between exact, broad, and phrase match? Rolando, give us the rundown, man. Yeah. So <laughs> there's actually, so with exact, you're just, you you want that exact word. That's what you're targeting uh, with, without any additions or subtractions. Uh, of course, with, with broad, um, it's going to start change. You're going to have your keyword that you're targeting, but then of course they're going to change it and try to find keywords that could tie in with your uh, keyword. And then phrase is I, either it's going to, it's going to be your keyword and then a keyword either before, a keyword after. So uh, there's a little bit of flexibility with broad and phrase. Yeah. A lot of wiggle room there. Exact, no wiggle room whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, so maybe an example would also help with this. Um, if, our main, if our keyword was keyboard tray, with exact match, they have to type in keyboard tray or a plural version of that, but it has to be those exact words, like uh, misspellings, plurals or stemmings are okay, but other than that it has to be the exact term keyboard tray. With phrase match, someone could type in bamboo keyboard tray because it has a word before it. So like Rolando said, with phrase match, it's okay to have a word before or after the phrase that you're using. And broad match, that means that someone could put words before, in between, or after it. So with keyboard tray, they could do bamboo keyboard tray, keyboard long tray, keyboard tray for computer. All of those, I would get an impression for that particular match type, okay? And with all of them, plurals, misspellings, and stemmings are allowed. They'll still fire on those. All right, Samantha Wood says, is PPC worth it when I'm FBM? So fulfilled by merchant. And as a result, Samantha Wood's probably not eligible for prime shipping. And, um, I would say it's still worth a try. You can give it a try and see what happens. Um, listings that are FBM and don't have prime eligibility typically don't convert as well. So as a result, uh, you know, PPC might be more expensive, but yeah, you can definitely give it a try. All right, Jurek asks, are you using any kind of ratio, gross income divided by PPC spend to decide on your P PPC daily budget? <laughs> Good question. So I don't like to um, put a very limiting daily budget if my ACOS is pretty low. 
So let me explain what I mean here. If I have a low ACoS, for example, let's say like 10%, 20%, even maybe 25%, if I'm making money on each sale, then I don't necessarily wanna limit how many sales like I'm making from that, right? Because I'll exchange $1 for $2 in paid campaigns all day, right? So, you know, if I can get it working that way and I'm exchanging $1, like every $1 I put in, I get $2 out. I just wanna put as many $1 bills in as possible, right? So that's how I typically think about it. In the earlier days, maybe your A costs are very high, 60%, 80%, 100%, whatever else, but you're still running PPC just so you can um, get sales, get reviews, rank better. If that's the case, then maybe I'd put a daily budget of say like $50 so that I don't spend too much money on any given day. All right, we got Gerald asking, what, what will be a good amount of, uh, for PPC per week? What's the best advice for someone that just launched their first product? What do you think, Rolando? Overall, I, th I think that you, it, it's dependent on the product that you're launching, of course. Um, I tend to do like anywhere between $25 to $50 a budget at, at launch, uh, a daily budget. But of course, that's really comes down to one, how much do you have? How much can you afford? Uh, how much have you allotted for this? And then two, uh, I wouldn't go any less than $25 a day. So whatever that equates to, because you definitely want to get those impressions. You definitely want to help bump that BSR. So uh, so definitely, you know, hitting it as aggressively as possible within the first two weeks is is what you're aiming for. And then you can, uh, you can assess the situation and uh, bring down the budget. Or as Greg says, if, uh, you know, if, if the sales are rocking, then uh, you might even want to bump up the budget. Cool. Michael said, how long should you run PPC aggressive? <laughs> I run it very aggressively until I start ranking well. So like maybe the first few spots on my main keywords, that's typically how long I do it for. Um, or maybe you've just started to achieve the daily sales velocity that you're looking for, that's when I would go into like optimize my PPC mode as opposed to um, still like aggressively uh, bid on it. Nicole says, my main keyword is generic and expensive, but that's where most of my sales come from. I have an auto and manual campaign. Should I add this keyword as a negative exact match in my auto campaign? Um, you can. So I guess what you're what you're thinking is this particular bidding on this particular keyword is too expensive. You can't do so profitably. You've already figured that out. So if that's the case, then yes, you can do a negative exact match in your auto campaign to make sure you don't show up for it. All right, adventurous human asks, I have one keyword rich. I have one keyword which is super popular and one that's that's more niche. Which one should I use? Should my PPC and Jumpson both target the same keywords? Um, I think what adventurous humans may be asking is like, uh, which one of these should they use with jump send? Because with PPC, I would be bidding on all these keywords. Like, um, you know, I'm bidding on hundreds and hundreds of keywords on my PPC campaigns. I'm not just choosing like one or the other, but with jump send, um, I think it is beneficial to just kind of target one particular keyword. Uh, so to do that, Uh, that, that's kind of a hard call. I would, I would have to like dig into it a little bit deeper. If the super popular one to you seems it'd be, like it would be almost impossible to rank for it, then I would go with like the more niche one. Otherwise, I'd probably go with the whichever one gets the more traffic. Typically, the more long tail, the better. <laughs> so definitely go for that. Um, Curly and Red Co. asks, uh, when first launching, what do you recommend setting your daily uh, PPC max to? Do you set it the same uh, for exact, broad, et cetera, 10, $15? Yeah, I think we've answered this a few times throughout this AMA. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the rule of thumb uh, Rolando gave is he said he wouldn't want to do more than like, say, $25 per day total. Um, if it's the early days, you know, I'd even go higher than that. But uh, it's really whatever you feel comfortable with. That being said, remember, if you're, like I spoke about earlier, putting in $1 and getting out $2, if that's the case for you and the, the uh, PPC is pretty profitable, then I wouldn't really want to limit that. You know, I would want to put more $1 in the $2 machine. <laughs> it's 
Sweet. All right. Jurek asks, uh, do you make changes uh, in the PPC campaigns or add different campaigns for Prime, Q4, and Christmas? Yeah. I. The only change that I sometimes make is to increase my daily budget. For example, like on Prime Day, I remember the first year I didn't do that and I didn't think to do so. Um, and I ended up like running out of all my budgets by like 11 a.m. because there was so much extra traffic that day. So that's the one thing you have to be mindful of is there, if there are extra traffic, you're gonna get extra clicks and you may run out of your daily budget. All right, Hans Christian asked, for how long do you run PPC campaigns? I run them forever. Um, yeah, in the early days, they're much more aggressive so that I can get more sales and rank better. Um, long term, I'm looking to optimize them so that my PPC campaigns are profitable. Uh, Jurek asks, when moving search term from auto to manual, what do you do to avoid competing for impressions on the search term? You do not need to worry about that. The Amazon sponsored products platform is smart enough so that you don't have to worry about bidding against yourself. Uh, if you come from like Google AdWords, I think that is a concern there, but with Amazon, you don't have to worry about bidding against yourself. It's smart enough to know uh, not to do that. All right, Zishan asks, once my product is high in the rankings, such as page one, should I keep doing PPC even if I have high sales velocity? If it's profitable, then yes, I would continue to do PPC. If you have some words that aren't profitable, then you can go ahead and um, stop those. But yeah, I mean, as long as my PPC campaigns or specific keywords are profitable, I let them run forever. Yeah, your competition is going to be doing it. So you definitely want to get ahead of them. <laughs> All right, Claudia asked, hola amigos. If I spend $75 in three days and I don't have any sales, I need to continue to compete the the week or uh, complete the week or turn it off? Um, so first of all, since you've only been doing it for three days, it takes 24 to 48 hours for your sales to even show up. So if you've been doing it for three days, you really only have like one day worth of uh, data that you could have potentially gotten sales. So I'd continue to run it. This is oftentimes what happens to people. They run it for like three, four or five days and they're like, whoa, this is too expensive. But really they just haven't um, ran it long enough. So if you're really worried about the money, you could decrease your daily budget a little bit, but you really need to run it for like a week before you start like kind of digging in there and trying to optimize it too much. All right, Kai asks, I've got an automatic campaign running for a product I've just listed. My ads are on page three. Can you please explain what factors matter most in regards to getting those ads shown on the first page? Your bid. The, your bid is the most important factor for getting it shown on the first page. It does need to be a relevant search result. So hopefully you have those keywords um, in your listing and Amazon knows that those keywords are relevant for your particular product. Um, after that, it's just an ad auction. So they, um, they look at like the relevancy, the match type, and then your bid. So the best way to get it on the top of the first page is just to bid more. Anthony on YouTube asks, my PPC was affordable the first, the first couple of days. Now I run, I've run out of budget in three to four hours. What could be the reason I am at $75 per day? Um, Maybe uh, there's more competitors on it now. Um, maybe Amazon has seen that your ad is performing well when people click on it, like it's resulting in conversions. So they're showing it more. Um, those are kind of the only reasons that I'd think of. But again, you didn't specifically state here, Anthony, but it, I get the sense you've only been right, um, running this for like a few days. So I would probably continue to run it. Even if you don't increase your daily budget, I'd probably just kind of continue to run it. All right, uh, Joel asks, I'm getting lots of impressions, but rarely any clicks. What would be a good suggestion? Um, that's actually pretty normal. So the click through ratio is like less than 1% on average. So that means like, every hundred searches and your ad that your ad gets shown, 
um, only like one of those people or less is gonna actually click on your ad. So Joel, that is very common to get lots of impressions and not that many clicks. The good thing is um, how their ad auction works is you're only getting charged for clicks. All right, Laura on Facebook asks, once you have good consistent sales, good rank on the first page and have optimized PPC, what does your daily PPC budget end up being? Again, Laura, this kind of goes back to if I'm making money on it, which it sounds like in the scenario that you gave that you are, um, I would set my budget high. Um, you know, I want my ad to be shown if I'm making money when I show those ads. So you could start with maybe $100. If it's really popular selling item, you're selling a ton of them, uh, that it could even be potentially more than that, like a few hundred dollars. But um, keep in mind, the way I always think about it, right, is if every time I spend $100 on ads, I make $200 extra in profit, then like I'm happy to spend that $100 in ads. All right, next question. FEO Led uh, asks, how can I optimize an automatic campaign? You can't do too much to optimize automatic campaigns. The only things you can do is add negative keywords or change the default bid. But the whole point of the automatic campaigns are that um, you don't have to go in there and make like little uh, adjustments or optimizations. If you wanna do that, then you should switch over to a manual campaign. Yeah, at that stage, what you wanna be able to do is try to uh, gain as many keywords, long tail keywords from, from those automatic campaigns. There is a good uh, uh, source out there on being able to create pivot tables. Uh, it's too much to be able to explain in the AMA, uh, but this, this uh, website actually walks you step by step. If you go to junglescout.com forward slash blog, forward slash Amazon pay per click optimization with dashes in between, that's where you want to go <laughs> and it's a little long, but uh, it, it's definitely going to, it will help to be able to, to understand uh, pivot tables. They seem, they sound a little scarier than what they really are. All it is is just being able to uh, extract the information that you're looking for from those automatic campaigns. Here's one for you, Rolando. Do you use any other marketing strategies other than Amazon PPC? Yes, I have. Uh, I will say that Amazon PPC is by far the best because people are in purchase mode when they're on amazon.com. And so the conversions are, are going to be a, a more to your advantage. I've driven outside traffic with Facebook ads. Uh, that's another effective uh, way of doing it, but uh, definitely a, that's a very advanced strategy. <laughs> Something that we wouldn't be able to cover in <laughs> In, uh, in 45 minutes, uh, uh, so yeah, it's taken years for me to understand Facebook ads. So that definitely, there's different ways, there's different, of course, we talk about giveaways. Uh, that's very important that you launch with a giveaway. Um, what other ideas would you uh, recommend, Greg? Yeah, no, I think that's good. All right, Laura on Facebook asks, once you get good consistent sales, good rank on the first page and have optimized PPC, what is your daily PPC, wait a second. Where do you at? I already answered that one. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. How long should you consider losing or breaking even on a PPC campaign? Um, as far as breaking even, I'll pretty much run a PPC campaign indefinitely if I'm breaking even on it because I like to get those additional sales so that I rank better. Um, breaking even is kind of like my break point. Hopefully it's at least a little bit profitable, but even if it's like just inching up towards breaking even, I'll pretty much run it indefinitely. As far as how long should you run it to lose money, hopefully that's only for like one, two, three weeks to get some additional sales, learn how well uh, the keywords are doing, optimize the keywords, get additional sales to get additional reviews, and then after that start optimizing. So yeah, and say, as far as losing money, hopefully like one to three weeks, breaking even, um, I'll do it about indefinitely, but you should be able to optimize them to make them profitable. All right, Rolando, can you run a manual campaign and an auto campaign at the same time? Absolutely, and you want to do that, <laughs> so yes. Cool, yeah, and then I, over time, I usually stop running my auto campaigns and switch totally to manually, because it gives you more granularity there, but, uh, what about this one, Rolando? Caesar asks, what's the best Jungle Scout tool? The light extension or the pro extension? What are the benefits of using the pro extension? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that it really falls down to your budget. I think both are very good at what they do. 
So uh, what you, whatever you, you can afford is probably a, a good starting point. Of course, you're going to get enhanced with, enhancements with the Pro, but the light will, uh, when I first started, <laughs> this is many years ago, um, I actually went with the light version and I was able to launch my first product with that. Now, of course, I upgraded over time uh, to get more, uh, get, to get access to, to the, the different tools, but, but definitely, you know, it's just dependent on where you're at and how much you have allocated for your, the tools that you're going to be spending on your business. Cool. Uh, Kornak Ogra on Facebook says, any rough estimates on average percent of PPC for a new launch? So if a product is 30 pounds, how much budget of that should be in PPC and why? Um, yeah, so I would say it's it's probably safe to say when you initially do a launch and just start at PPC that your A cost, so that's the advertising cost of sale, is going to be probably, it's fair to say it's going to be 100% of your sales. So for 30 um, British pounds, you can expect to spend 30 pounds in uh, PPC spend as well. Now, of course, this isn't going to last forever. In the early days, you are trying to figure out what keywords work well for your particular product. You're trying to figure out user behavior. Um, and you're also just trying to get those initial sales, okay? So um, yeah, I think it's fair to budget 100% of your retail price on PPC. All right, Michael on YouTube asks, how should I run PPC in a very competitive niche? Uh, the same way that we teach to run PPC in all niches, there's not necessarily a um, like hacks or tricks or something like that we've been holding back on you. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I set it up and run it the same way, whether it's hyper competitive or uh, not. All right. Nancy asks, during the research phase, is there a way to tell if my product category has a high ACoS? Are uh, there strategies uh, you use to find products with lower A costs? If you go into the Keyword Scout, which is inside of the Jungle Scout web app, um, you can see the recommended bids for different keywords, okay? So during the research phase, you can go in there, you can look at the recommended bids to get an idea of how much a click is going to cost you. To figure out the A cost, the advertising cost of sale, that partially depends, I mean, that de really depends on two things. It depends on the price of the bids, which you can see in Keyword Scout. The other thing that Keyword Scout or no one can tell you is how well your particular listing is going to convert for that keyword, okay? So, um, you know, on some very relevant keywords, your listing may convert at say like 10%. Other non-relevant keywords, it might only convert at like 1%. And that's what um, no one really knows, but you can make some assumptions like that. All right, Zishan asks, can I do the PPC setup before I get any inventory into Amazon? How long before getting inventory should I set up marketing and PPC? Um, yeah, you can, let's see. You can create campaigns for products even when you're out of stock. So I guess you can go ahead and do that now. Um, you won't get any impressions, of course, until after it gets in. But yeah, I, I like the uh, the go-getter attitude and getting a, a head start on it here. I think definitely what's critical is just doing your keyword research uh, in advance. So that's a good piece that you can, you know, you could uh, knock out by going to uh, Keyword Scout for sure. <laughs> Laura on Facebook says, in general, do keywords change over time? Should we do keyword research every several months to make sure we aren't eventually doing PPC on the wrong words? Or do the keywords generally stay the same? Yeah, I like to freshen up my um, my PPC campaigns every few months. So there may be some new words or some different things that are kind of like popular or trending at that time. So feel free to do that PPC or the, the keyword research every few months. That being said, if you run out of time or don't really get a chance to do to do so, it's probably not that big of a deal. But um, yeah, if you're a, uh, a a good student, then it would uh, be helpful to do so. I also want to make mention about Jungle Market. Uh, heading over to junglemarket.com. If if this if like this optimization stuff just really uh, concerns you and you just feel like it's too much, uh, if you head over to junglemarket.com, there's actually uh, 
Amazon um, freelancers there that do this for a living. So that's one way of just kind of bypassing that altogether. <laughs> if you're in that, if you're, you know, if you're a little, uh, feel like you're in, in over your head with this stuff. <laughs> Adventurous human. When reviewing if a PPC campaign was successful, what metrics do you look at? What's a good benchmark? The main metric that I look at to review a PPC campaign to determine whether or not it was successful is the ACoS, advertising cost of sale. And this is one of the metrics that Amazon gives you. Um, if your ACoS, it's a percent. If your A cost is a lower percent than your margins for that particular item, then I deem that PPC campaign successful. So let's pretend that you have 33% margins for your particular product. If my A cost, advertising cost of sale, is say 20%, then even with my paid ads or when they're clicking on my paid ads, I'm still making like a 13% margin on that particular product. And with that, you know, 13% margins alone aren't very good, of course. But with that, I'm getting additional sales. And as a result, I'm ranking better, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's why I consider anything, any A cost that is less than my margins a success. All right. Anthony asks, is there an easier way to find out what page is your product? Could we add that tool to JS? Winky Good question. Case. Inside of Splitly, <laughs> we actually have a keyword rank tracker. So if you're using Splitly, which is an AB optimization tool um, for Amazon listings, that's exactly what you can do. You can type in different keywords and it'll let you know on what page and on what spot you're ranking on those pages. All right. This one's for uh, you, Rolando, from Peace Lotus. Yeah. How many units are you ordering for the Jungle Slider? How many are you shipping via Express to get the listing started? All right. So we're ordering a total, a cumulative total of 1,500 because we want to, we have two variations. Uh, we don't want to run out of stock <laughs> right away. So uh, we're so that's basically the, the order quantity. Um, as far as Express, we aren't shipping any Express. Uh, we don't see uh, any necessity for that. So I think that uh, I just, we're, yeah, they're, they're a big bulky product. So. <laughs> yeah. In the past, we have shipped Express to get our listing started because we're excited and we want to get them in there. Um, but for this particular product, since it is pretty big and heavy, we looked at the pricing for Express shipping and um, it made my stomach hurt a little bit. It was uh, too much. So we're not going <laughs> to ship any Express of this one. <laughs> Yeah, so it's uh, the breakdown is 750 bamboo, 750 black, and uh, and yeah, that's 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 where we're at with that right now. Totally. So let's see. Um, Mohammed said, "Can you use competitor brand names in your PPC campaigns?" Um, I'll tell you right now that people do do this. I do believe it's against Amazon's terms of service to do so, but it's not something that seems to be heavily policed or enforced. I don't personally do it because I don't like to break any of the rules, but yeah, there you go. Um, Sally Ma yeah. says, is it easy to review the results of a PPC campaign? What do you think, Rolando? I believe so. I, I, that link that was dropped in the uh, chat box, it will really help you uh, figure this out. It's not complicated does require a little bit of going into Excel and uh, crunching the numbers, but um, it really, creating a pivot table is probably one of the easiest things you'll ever do once you understand how, how to do it and what you're looking for. Yeah, and you don't even necessarily have to create a, a pivot table to review the results, right? Inside Seller Central, there's even um, just uh, tables and information in there to review your PBC campaign. So yeah, once you learn how to do it, it's, um, it's pretty easy. And you can dive in on a keyword level and just kind of look at each keyword and see which ones are basically, you can just compare how much your spend is and how much you're making on that. And you know, right there, right then and there, if, if you uh, if you got a good keyword. Totally. So let's see. The next one is when you pull advertising reports to optimize your campaign, how far do you look back? 60 days, 30 days, or a couple weeks. I look back until I made my last changes, okay? So if two weeks ago was the last time that I made changes, so like I tried, I decreased some bids and increased other bids and whatever else, then that's how far I look back. And that's what I recommend for you guys. When you're just getting started, I would just look back to the very beginning of kind of when you started it all. All right. So let's see, Claudia. 
to rank better for uh, or and to help your PPC, uh, you need reviews. What happens with all these emails Amazon sent to me saying that they can't that they can't send my emails to the customers because they don't want to receive it? I wish there was a way in Amazon to turn that email off because it's annoying. But all that it's saying is those people opt out, opted out of receiving email. So just like for any e-commerce store or any website, like at Jungle Scout, for example, like if you're on our email list and we're sending you emails to notify you about upcoming million dollar case study episodes or whatever else, down at the bottom, you have the ability to unsubscribe, right? So you can click that little unsubscribe link. And as a result, we no longer send you those emails. So that's what customers have done. They've unsubscribed from Amazon emails. But for whatever reason, Amazon likes to send you an email every dang time that um, you try to send some an email to someone who's been unsubscribed. So what I would recommend is just like creating a filter in Gmail so those automatically go to the trash. You don't have to worry about them. There's nothing you can do about it. It's they've unsubscribed and yeah, that's, yeah, there's nothing you have to do. All right. All right. Um, it looks like we're uh, getting close to the end, huh, Greg? <laughs> Uh, but I wanted to make mention about what the uh, what the schedule looks like going forward. Uh, so as you know, we're going into our mid-season break. So uh, from here through the start of the new year, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have one more AMA on December 6th, where we're going to announce the winner of our Amazon Seller Seed Fund. So you still have time uh, to, to get your action items completed and drop them in the uh, closed Facebook group. So make sure that, that you uh, take care of that. And then you have until midnight, December 5th, and on December 6th is when we announce the winner and pretty much cover any questions you may have uh, related to the Million Dollar Case Study or your product launches, whatever the case may be. Awesome. And if you guys aren't familiar, the seller Amazon Seller Seed Fund, you win up to $2,500. Is that right, Rolando? And there's right. three winners total. So the grand prize is 2,500 bucks. And then there's a second and third prize who gets a nice cash prize as well. That's right. Cha -ching. Cha -ching. <laughs> All right. I think we have time for one more question. Then we'll wrap up today's episode. Claudia Fisher says to rank better on Amazon to help your PPC campaigns, you need reviews. What happens? With, oh, where do you answer this one? <laughs> oh man, okay. Lori says, if you have several variations, do you advertise all of them or just one? Um, the short answer is it doesn't really matter. Um, the one thing that I will say is you can specifically advertise each variation. So for example, with our hooded baby towels, we have a pink one, a blue one, a white one, and a gray one. And you know, the pink one does better for terms with like girl or um, female or whatever else, because the pink one's more popular for um, baby girls where the blue one would be more popular for baby boys. So you can do the same thing. Like if you're selling shoes, you can advertise size 12 for size 12, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the only thing that I typically do different with variations. Other than that, I, um, uh, yeah, keep it about all the same. So I think that wraps up the content of today's episode. Rolando, who is this week's Million Dollar Case Study Challenge winner? Our winner for today is Antonio Rubio. Congrats, Antonio. That's awesome. You get access to the web app for two months. So don't forget to shoot us your email to freedombuilders at junglescout.com to claim that prize. Thank you guys very much for tuning in to this episode. It's been fun, Rolando. It was good seeing you and I will see you next time. Congrats again, Antonio. See you guys. All right. Keep crushing it, Freedom Builders. <laughs>